In this video, I'm going into Linux monitor calibration. Now, this is kind of a weird subject because a lot of people have made videos on how to configure displays or monitors in Linux, but usually it's, hey, are they using KDE or GNOME or Mate or all these different versions of a desktop environments. And this can be confusing, especially when you reboot and all of a sudden it loses all those settings. And Really, what it boils down to is a, a misunderstanding in the Linux community of how to present this problem, or a lot of times you talk to the person that knows the solution and they just overcomplicate it. So with that said, forget the desktop configuration altogether. Let's go to the display renderer called Xorg. And Xorg loads up before our desktop environment and we can configure all our displays from Xorg. And that's what we're gonna do in this video using config files. And it's really a great way of doing it because before the desktop environment even loads, it knows exactly where all your monitors are. It's already set them, it's already configured. So you can honestly go between desktop environments and it doesn't matter. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump over on the desktop and configure some monitors using basic XORG config files. Okay, so most people have a displays module for configuring their monitors in their desktop environment, whether it's KDE, GNOME, or uh, Mate, you, you name it. Everyone has their own, but sometimes they just don't work quite right. So we can configure it from the X11 uh, perspective. This is mainly all distributions run Xorg, but some use Wayland. Most times people just go and disable it and move back to X11. So if you don't know what that means, if you're having issues, uh, you might Google uh, actually figuring out if you're using X11 or Xorg. Now, let's start this off by installing a utility, X11-Xserver Utilities. These utilities help us figure out what monitors what. So uh, let's go ahead and install that, and then we're just going to use XRandR. Now this lists all the stuff. The stuff with the asterisk like this means this mode is currently enabled, uh, this mode up here is enabled. Again, we can use our display to figure out exactly where these are, but uh, you can also look and usually they're labeled display port and HDMI. So obviously my HDMI is this monitor, display port's this monitor. The big thing here, while we ran the X Randar command is to get one our modes and then also the identifier. This right here is one identifier and then this down here is our other identifier. Now this is a disconnected port on my graphics card that's currently not being used. That is another identifier. Just to give you an idea of how this is laid out from a system functionality level. So remember identifiers and remember the modes right here. This is important. Uh, this is your actual resolution. These are the actual available refresh rates. So with that said, let's go ahead and create our config file. So to do the config file, we're going to go to CD etc x11. Now, the next one is going to be cdxorg.conf.d. If you don't have this directory or it doesn't exist, go ahead and make it. Um, you can just do an mkdir for make directory, xorg. It will need to be run as super user. So let's list here. We have no files in this directory. So let's go ahead and make our file as super user. We'll do nano. 10-monitors.conf. Um, I like to add numbers, especially when configuration directories, just as a general housekeeping issue. Um, how Linux works is when it sees a configuration directory here, it starts with one and works its way to 99. So if you had something that you wanted run last, you'd probably put that at like 90 or 99. Um, I don't like to jump all the way to the end. You kind of want to start in close to the middle or so. That way it gives you leverage to go up and down. So this is probably the first thing I ever want to run. Uh, but let's say there's something else that creeps in there, like a screen or something like that I wanted to configure later on down the road. I could put nine dash and it would get pushed in front of this config file. So. With that, let's go ahead and create this dash 10, and I'm gonna take a template that I've created. Uh, it's in the description down below, so you can copy and paste this into your uh, Nano here as well. So we're gonna just go ahead and paste that. 
So we'll select it and then paste it right in here. So I went ahead and commented this so you can easily see what's up. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this mode line. I honestly would not usually use, but in this instance, it's giving me modes that I don't want. So I want to lock the mode of my main monitor into this. Now the identifier here is wrong. It's not HDMI one, as we saw earlier. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up XRandar again. It's actually this right here is my identifier. So let's copy that and we'll just go ahead and paste that in here. So our identifier for this top one is going to be this. Now our mode line will leave preferred mode. This just says, Hey, we want to take the preferred mode and block it at this and set the target refresh rate to 60. And then we want to have say, Hey, is this above or below uh, display port zero? So this is actually going to be um, below it. So we'll go ahead and put below display port zero. And if we look at our other one, let's see display port zero. Yeah, that's the actual other identifier uh, that we're going to about to do as well. And then what position? This is the X position and this is the Y position. So the position of this one will be about 300, 300 over, because if we add that 2560 is the other one. So um, quick math here, that would be 640. Half of 640 would be 320. So that would give us exactly that much over because this is centered under my ultra wide, which is a bit bigger. And then that ultra wide length, how tall it is, is 1080. And we'll put 1080 as the start point. This puts in, uh, just think of the very top of wherever you're starting is 0, 0.0. So we're going 300 to the right and then down 1080. And that's where this monitor starts. The very top, which is 0, 0, will be our ultra wide. And that's display port dash 0. And then we can also say, hey, we want to disable a certain one. So if we wanted to disable it, we would actually do that. But we do not want to disable this. So uh, we're going to just go ahead and cut that out. So we have this section, which is great. We'll go ahead and copy that in there. And I went, I didn't quite get all of the copies. So let's go ahead. So right now we have just literally both of these. So we're going to say highlight all this and we'll change the identifier over here to this. Actually, we'll do our copy paste, come down here. Okay, so we flip flop this to say, hey, the identifier is this. Um, mode line, we're just going to go ahead and remove it for this top monitor. Preferred mode is going to be the 2560, 2560 by 1080. Target refresh is going to be 60 as well to match our other monitor. And this is actually going to be above our other monitor, above, and the position is going to be zero, zero, because this is the first monitor. So we always work from the top down, top left down, or most people don't have up and down monitors like me. They have left to right. Always start from the left, 0.0, .0 and then work our way to the right, um, just as general uh, rule of thumb. So with this, we should be able to output it, and everything should be pretty good. Um, let's go ahead, output this, and exit. And I'm going to go ahead and do a reboot here, and let's see what we get uh, after rebooting. Well, that was fun. Uh, any pro people out there that watch this video probably cringed a little bit when I said I'm going to reboot because I made a syntax error in my template. I said, uh, parentheses, typically this would be this identifier. Well, I forgot to take that out and it completely booted to, uh, terminal screen. So I actually had to go through my config and fix that. If that happens to you and you have syntax errors and you don't know what to do, type start X. Start X is start X11 or start XORG. 
And what this does is when it pulls up, it's gonna error out and tell you, hey, there's a syntax error in your config file at line three, character 16. And it'll actually say, hey, parentheses, typically, because I put a note typically without actually commenting it like a big dum-dum. So anyways, I was able to boot back in. Um, this is what it looks like now. Uh, it's really a lot cleaner. I really enjoy it. Everything's kind of set exactly how it should be, which is nice. So uh, if I take this and drag it somewhere and do something with it, I reboot my computer, um, you know, it, it'll automatically default back to that one because that's what XORG is at. But now I literally wouldn't even have to configure this should I switch desktop environment. So if I go over to GNOME, it would be exactly like this. It would be just so nice. It's not configured at a desktop environment level anymore. It's configured at the X level, uh, X org level, which is the display renderer that happens before the desktop environment even takes off. So pretty powerful tool of fixing this up, no matter what desktop environment you're at, uh, just you have to be running XORG, which pretty much everyone is, probably 99% of the Linux community probably runs that. There you go, and this is configuring monitors, this method. I really enjoy this method. It's a little bit more cumbersome to set up initially, but I find it's so much more reliable. I never have to worry about my monitors getting reset or, oh, hey, I unplug that cable and plug it back in and then everything gets garbled up and moved to different locations. None of that. I just unplug it, plug it back in. Something happens, I just reboot the computer. It all resets back to this default state that we just set in this config file. So. Pretty awesome stuff. Uh, Windows can't even touch that. You know, same thing happens in Windows when you unplug and plug something back in. Uh, when it comes to monitors, it loses that configuration or sometimes it doesn't put it back exactly the way it was. And it's just a big pain where when you have the hard coded config files in there, it just makes life wonderful because I'm constantly switching stuff around on my desktop and I had to figure this out. Uh, and I did it about six, seven months ago or something like that. And it has been just a lifesaver ever since where doesn't matter what desktop of my environment I'm on, it always just works. So with all that said, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this. Was it helpful? Was it a little bit too complex? I know this was more of a power user video. However, I thought a lot of people would benefit from it. But with all that, thank you to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And if you haven't already, hit the bell uh, and get notified about all the videos I have coming out as I do produce content daily. And I'll see you in the next one.